Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial about double integral. For warm-up, let's solve this integral. It's pretty simple and in first step it would be equal to or which gives and the only thing it's left to do is to solve this integral regarding variable y. So is this number represents something? What is the meaning of this number? Well, it depends of what the integral function means. The integral function is the one which describes the obtained result. Okay, let's look what is the integral function if we want for result to be a volume. Observe some given function and this is a graph of that function in some domain. Let's go and calculate the volume beneath the function. It would be very easy if we have a flat surface of the function. So, in that case, the volume is height multiplied by the area of the domain. But in our case, we have that the height differs from point to point. So, what can we do? First, let's approximately determine the volume. To do that, we will divide the domain, for example, like this. The lines are perpendicular to the axis. Now, look at the one part of the domain and calculate the volume above it. Again, it is height multiplied by the area. The height is chosen arbitrarily. We choose one point from each part randomly and then take the value of the function as a height. And the volume of this part will be approximately given by this formula. Now, calculate the volume for each and every part and make summation. The volume beneath the function will be approximately given by this formula. Of course, the smaller the parts, the precision is better. Finally, the correct volume can be obtained if we let the delta x and delta y to go to zero. In our case, the volume will be equal to this. But very often, one need to determine a volume of the intersection of two or more figures. Look at this example. We have to determine the volume of the intersection of XY plane, paraboloid and the cylinder. And of course, the hardest part is to determine intersection and the boundaries. To make it easier, let's show in this way. Okay, it's better, but it will be better if we show just the intersection part. Like this. Now, we need to calculate the integral. If we choose polar coordinates, then the boundaries will be for r from 0 to 2 sine theta, and for theta from 0 to pi. And in a few steps, we will got this results. Okay, but how a double integral can help us to determine the mass of some flat body? First, it's not a problem if you have a flat body of the same density. For example, flat disc or foil with radius of one meter and if the density is 1 kilogram per square meter, then the mass of the disk is pi kilograms. But what if the flat body is made from different materials? Something like this. Well, this can be solved if we found the mass of every and each rings separately and then sum all of them. 
But what if we have something like this? What then? And what is the mass have anything in common with double integral? Well, if we know the density function of the flat body, then we can do the same thing as we've done for the volume. Just one remark, the red means the denser area and the blue the opposite. So, divide the domain. If we look closer, we will notice that in each part is approximately just one color, which means that the part approximately have the same density in each point. So we can use the value of density in any point of the part as a good approximation and multiply it by the area of that part to get the mass of that part. If we sum all of these masses, we will have the mass of the flat body. And of course, when delta x and delta y goes to zero, we will have the mass is equal to this double integral. Is this any way or anyhow similar to previous case? Of course it is. The red area represents the denser area, so it can be shown with bigger number on z-axis. Let me show you what I mean, but give me some time to lift up those values. Like this. Just one moment and there it is. It's not body that change its shape. The body is still flat. The shape is actually the function we call density function. And as you know, it depends on x and y. Okay, that is all regarding the mass, but there is one more interesting case. We can apply double integral to calculate the flow of the fluid through the pipe of cross of constant cross section. Actually, the flow is the volume of the fluid that pass through the cross section of the pipe for one second. In this case, I'm showing you right now, it seems to be so simple. If the time of the flow is one second and the fluid pass one meter, then the speed of the fluid is one meter per second. And then if we multiply speed and cross section, we will have one cubic met meter per second is flow. But here is what I call more realistic case. So how to determine the flow in this case? I'm pretty sure that you already know the answer. And it goes like this. Divide the cross section to get smaller parts. The speed of the fluid will be similar for all molecules passing through one of the parts. So we can approximately calculate the flow through one of the parts if we multiply speed of the fluid and area of the part. Then we sum all of it and let delta x and delta y goes to zero. And again, we will have the double integral to calculate the flow. Of course, there are a lot of examples of application, but it will take place in some other videos. If you find this video interesting, and it's interesting for you, please subscribe and like. Until next time, bye-bye.